breath out. We'll bring our palms together in Anjali Mudra and take this moment to set an intention for your practice today. That intention could be one of gratitude for all that is in your life right now. That intention could also be something that you would like to raise the vibe of and to create more abundance in. And we'll open here together with one big om. Breathe in. Release your hands, open your eyes, and let's come around to hands and knees posture table. Stack your shoulders over your wrists, spread your palms, and just begin moving somewhat organically through cat and cow, using your breathing to create the timing. And with the intentionality of creating some sweet movement in the spinal cord and some space, three or four more rounds of cat-cow. As you take another breath in, go ahead and curl all your toes under and keep that bit of a tilt in your tailbone. Slowly lift your hips up and high to downward facing dog. Give yourself enough space in down dog to feel a little bit of stretch and lengthening through the backs of the legs and through the whole spine. Continue to focus on your breathing through your nose, you jaggy breath. A lot of times I like to soften my knees so I can create a little more traction through my spine and even shift the hips side to side like you're wagging your tail. This one's from room. Hmm. Get into the size of your back, your hips. Feels so great. Gradually come back to more neutral downward facing dog. Give this one more big breath. And move forward to the hands. You can walk or take a big step. Make your way to the top of your mat for ragdoll posture. So set your feet a bit apart, maybe like two fists. You can keep your knees soft and catch your elbows with your hands. And do let your head go heavy. You kind of move around your head so your neck can get a little ease of movement. Just continue to focus on your breath through the nose, nice and slow. Press a little bit more through the big toe mounds of each foot and move the body weight forward just a touch. Take one more deep breath. Release the hands and let's make our way forward to a halfway lift. Walk your feet together, somewhat together. As you exhale, fold forward, lift the chin, draw in towards your chest. Do that again, halfway lift. Hands on the shins can enable a good long spine. It's really good. Bow as you exhale, fold in towards your thighs. Rise up, all together. Here we go, reach to the ceiling, reach to the sky. Eyes high, hands lay right by your side. Somewhat stick to keep. Let's start with sun A. Inhale, and as you do, reach your arms to the ceiling. Take a bow as you exhale. Pull forward into a long spine, halfway left. And for starters, let's step right back to high plank position. 
Take a time to set up shoulders under your wrists. Activate your thigh bones lifting. Pull the pit of the belly in. Gaze is forward and breathe. As you exhale, shift a little bit forward and lower all the way to the ground. Cobra posture, so extend the legs, hands right by your chest. Wrap your elbows and your upper arm bones in toward your side and create as much length as you can from your chest pulling forward and your toes reaching back. Imagine the length you're growing in your whole body, especially your spine. So breathe into that intention. As you exhale, pull the pit of your belly in. Take one more breath. Lower down the forehead and curl all ten toes under and lift your knees and tone the belly. High plank could be with straight legs or bent knees. Downward facing dog. Take a deep breath. Empty it out. Look forward. Feet will land right at the top of your back. Take a halfway lift as long as your spine. Fold and forward. Rise, Tadasana, stretch high. Look up, maybe a tiny bit of a back bend. Bow forward with your exhale. Lead to a halfway lift. High and low push up. So if you like to jump, you jump. If you want to come back to the ground for cobra, perfect. Or go halfway chaturanga and move into upward facing dog. These are always choices you can take. We'll eventually meet back in downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. Tone the pit of the belly in as you exhale. Stay breath centered. Notice how this feels in your body right now. One more deep breath. Look forward into your hands. You can step or jump the top, halfway lift and lengthen, bow as you exhale, just rise, tadasana, sweep up high, fold on forward, one more round, exhale your air, halfway lift, chaturanga, high and low push up, press strong into your back, that your thighs are really active, downward facing up. Three deep breaths. Notice your hands. Can you spread them out a little bit more? Create some space in the palms and fingers. One more good deep breath. Move forward to your hands. Step or jump right to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Long spine. Fold. Let's rise. Up to standing. Toss it up. Hands right by your side, Samastitiki. Let's go for Sun B. Chair pose starts here. Bend the knees. Inhale, sweep your arms to the sky. Fold as you exhale. Lead to a halfway lift. High and low push up. Close that back bend. Cobra or upward facing dog. Hips go high, downward dog. Left heel grounds. Right foot steps. Warrior one, take one breath, reach up. Hands plant, you move through. High and low push up, your choice. Upward dog or cobra pose. Downward facing dog. Right heel grounds, left foot steps. Rise up as you breathe. Hands down, crane the foot, low push up. Breathe in, up dog. Breathe out, down dog. Stay here, catch your breath. I need to catch my breath. I live at sea level and I'm probably at 8,000 feet right now. It's amazing how it changes things. Take one more big breath, Tampa. Look to your hands, step or jump. Right at the top, halfway lift, long spine, hold forward. Chair pose, 
sink heart rises. Let's land with our hands down towards the floor. Crow pose could be a beautiful little option. If you prefer to take a squat position, Malasana, please do. Some days it's good even to test the waters. So the palms are spread, use your fingertips as the bits of balance points, little rudders. Pull the belly in, gaze forward. And start to play with balance. One foot might come up, two feet might come up. Celebrate whatever you have. Take one big breath. We'll meet in high and low push up. Breathe through your back toes. That was fun. Downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward. Warrior one. Give it a good breath. Reach high. Hands down. High and low push up. Inhale through your back bend. Downward dog. Other side. Left foot steps. Hips stay low. It's good movement for the hip joints. Hands to the floor. High and low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing. Ha. Deep breath here. Open your mouth. Ha. Let it go. Let's bring the feet together in this dog. Sweep your right leg up to the sky. And as you exhale, pull forward, cheetah, knee into your nose. Reach up and breathe. Knee to your nose, cheetah. One more time. Send it high to the sky. Knee to your nose. Keep that tucking in. Step your foot right there between your hands. Find your way to a low lunge. You can stay up on your fingertips. If you have blocks, you can put a block under each hand. And settle into the hips. Activate your back thigh and simple twist, right arm to the sky. Notice how you want to lean into one hand to try to sink down and get into the legs as well. Reach high. Give it one more deep breath here. Downward facing up. Your choice, you can come forward into a high push up, low push up. Through the back bend of your choice. Downward facing up. Stay with the feet a little closer here. Send the left leg up to the sky. Breathe. Cheetah. Knee draws in. Reach up as you inhale. Pull the knee in. Pull your belly in. One more time. Reach up. Knee pulls in. Step right between the hands again. Lower into the hips. Shift around if it feels good. We'll keep this right hand on the floor. Your left arm goes to the ceiling for a twist. Your neck will let you look up to your high hand here. Take one more deep breath. Downward facing up. Stay here or flow through a high and a low push up. Facing up. Down, face up. Deep breath in. Open your mouth, empty it out. Look towards your hands. Step or jump right to the top. Halfway lift. Take your bow. Cheerful. Sink your hips. Keep up. Breathe. Hold on forward, option, crow pose, option, malasana, so many options. Where you are, breathe, and we'll meet through a vinyasa. Take your back bend of choice. I'm down here facing up. Next right leg goes to the sky. This time sink into the left heel. Bend your top knee and just start to open up the hips. When the head stays heavy, you can stay there or move to a flip dog. I tend to keep my legs straight in my flip dog because it helps the shoulder on the ground for me. Some folks prefer to keep both feet on the ground like this. So you choose. What's today for you? 
every day our body appears a little differently. So give us a good deep breath in. And exhale, come around to a high plank pose. Pull the legs together, feet together. Side plank, Vashisthasana. Bring that right palm more to the center and a little bit forward of your shoulder. Come onto your right side. There's so many variations to this posture. You can drop a foot, you can drop a knee. Ooh. You can take your whole body and drop. Strong legs, lift the hips, breathe. Make your way to a high push up pose. Inhale here. Lower down, Chaturanga. Move through your vinyasa. that? Downward facing dog. Okay. Right foot steps forward. Crescent lunge. Come up. Sink into your legs. Soften through your back knee. Really create some space in the front of your left hip. And if you want to get a little more challenge, take that left knee down to more of a hover. And tone in the low belly so you really keep your Lower body strong. Let's inhale, straighten your legs. Exhale, sink. Do it a few times. Breathe, sink on down. Okay. One more time. As you breathe out, sink into your lungs. Work the back a little bit stronger, the back leg. Inhale, pull the upper body back. Twist to your right. Prayer twist. Uh, the elbow on your thigh, maybe your arm straighter, or even drop the back knee if you prefer. Twisting can be a precarious thing. Focus a lot on the exhalation and squeeze the pit of the belly in to give you some more space to rotate into. Give us two more breaths. Don't forget about the back leg. Keep it strong and lifted. Beautiful. So here we go. Big breath in. It's going to take you to warrior two. Back heel grounds. As you exhale, sink into that front knee. Reverse the front palm. Let's reverse our warrior pose. Reach up and back. Side angle posture. So you do the lock hands. You can take the hand to a block. Elbow to knee. I think I'll go this way today. Breathe and extend the top arm, and then reach it over your head towards the front of your room. Plug in your back heel. Focus on length from the back heel through your top fingers. Deep breaths. Rotate the ribcage open. There's other variations if you like half binding, full binding. I invite you to. Play around there for yourself. Open up the shoulders and the hips. Give it two more deep breaths. Beautiful. Hands come down. Make your way to a high push up pose. Inhale there. Exhale, low push up. Your back leg. Inhale, strong legs. Down your face, you know. Ha. Do that. Deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth and ah, let it out. Feet a little closer. Send your left leg up to the sky. And bend the knee. Open up. Little test the heel. Drop it down. And then open to a flip dog or stay in your three-legged dog position. This is a back bend posture. So find the length in your spine and as the whole body lengthens, breathe into that. Gradually, we'll come to a high push up. Feet and legs together. Vashisthasana, side plank, just a fancy word for that. Left palm forward and center. Roll onto your left side. Maybe look up to your hand hands. See what's up in the rafters here. Two more breaths. Squeeze the legs strong. Beautiful. Look down. High push up. Breathe here. Low push up. Upward facing arm. Downward facing. Ha. 
Step the left foot forward, crescent lunge. Rise when you're ready. Breathe. Again, soften the back knee. Create a bit of a forward tilt to the pelvis. Get into the hip flexors and that deep psoas muscle in your abdominals. We'll breathe in straight in your legs. Exhale, sit down. Inhale. Breathe. So focus up your eyes. Dristi, very valuable in these kind of movements. It creates a lot of levelness and balance. And focus. Two more. Stay in this low crescent lunge. Give your back leg a little more strength and breathe. Prayer twist to the left side. Put your arm or your forearm on your thigh. Remember your options. Listen to your body. Could be different from right and left side as well. Emphasize your breath out. Two more breaths. Give me a strong breath in to warrior two. Back foot press. In the left. Sink in. Make any adjustments that you need to, if any. And drop in. Gaze over your front fingers. Breathe. Spin the front palm. Reverse your warrior. Open up. Good old breath here. Hands down. Let's move through a vinyasa. Flush all that out. Breathe in. Exhale. Right away, capture a few breaths. Ha. One more deep breath. Look to your hands, you can step or you can jump. Halfway legs. Bow. So check your feet before you come into chair. You want your feet parallel, they can be together or slightly apart. And drop the hips. Inhale, sweep your arms up. The hips pull back and down and really tone in the belly. Take a good deep breath here. Twisting to the right, prayer twist. Palms, or even a fist in a palm, depending on your wrist. So notice what can happen. Check out my knees. I can do this so easily because I feel like I'm twisting more and I feel really good. But we're going to keep in your knees parallel so your sacrum stays healthy. So just lower the hips, lift your heart, and do what you can do. Breathe. If you want to open your arms to more of a straight rotation, if you like to practice side curl, here's a fun place to pop that in. I've been in a band for almost a month, so my back's not really wanting to do that. So here we go here. Breathe. One more deep breath. Keep the body position it's in. Arms here to to the sky. Chair pose, breathe in. Stay here. Breathe out, sink your hips. Inhale, straighten your legs, reach up high. Fold on forward. Long breath in, halfway left. Bow and exhale. Chair pose, Utkatasana. Let's load, sweep up. Twist to the left. Use an exhalation to enter this rotation. Connect to the breath. Choose your variation. For three. stationary in chair. Inhale the arms to the sky. Stay here. Sink a little bit more. Inhale straight in your legs. Great work. Bow forward. Come up halfway and separate your feet about a couple of fist distance again. Let's grab our peace fingers from the inside of the big toes. And step on those. Take another inhale. Long in your spine. Bow forward. Stay about five, six breaths. If you draw the belly in, draw the chin in, you're creating the big Maha Lak Mula Bandha. 
Udiyananda Bandha and your throat lock, Jatandara Bandha. Two more deep breaths. Release your toes, come bring your feet back together, move forward into a long spine and breathe. Let's move through a high and low push up. We thought we never get to that, right? Upward dog or cobra pose. Downward facing dog. High. Send your right leg to the sky with a good deep breath. Let's pull the right knee to your right elbow. So come forward like cheetah. Squeeze. Send your leg up high. Take it over to the left side. Pull it in and then squeeze. Send your leg back up high. Step between the hands. Ground the back heel, warrior two, once again. Sink on in. Reverse this warrior, go up and back. This front knee bends. Take one more deep breath. I'm just gonna tilt the upper body for half moon. So if you're gonna reach forward, you can reach for your block at any height. Pick up your left leg. Whatever you're doing with the right hand, be light in it as opposed to super weight bearing. Work the left leg at least as high as your hip or even a little bit more. I tend to like to get into my quads here and go for a bind so you can catch the ankle, foot, and then kick into that for three. your foot if you have it. Let's step back to a low lunge. And just go around. We're going to go lower down the back knee for starters and open up the foot to the right a bit so you have some space to come down either on your elbows or block. If you would like to keep the back knee down, that's super cool. Just slide the knee back as far as it'll go to really open up the whole hips, front hips, side hips. If you wanted a little more strength in that back leg, it's cool. Pick the back knee up and squeeze strong through the muscles. And breathe. And you could stay here a little bit longer. If you wanted to get, again, more into the hips and quads, you can reach the right arm behind you. See if you can find your foot. Some days it's easier than others. And I'm going to lean into this. It feels really good to open up through the shoulders and the side. Lean into that. And then as well, I love where you square the hips off and you get the other two quadricep muscle fibers. Sink in and breathe. One more deep breath. If you have your foot in hand, let's lower it. Moving to pyramid pose. So walk this right foot forward to the mid section of your mat and bring the back foot a little closer. And you could even take the feet a little wider. So you can get the hips and the sacrum once again more level. Just taking a good deep breath. Lengthen your spine. Hinge right here from your hips as you fold. And kind of tug the right hip back. And notice the front foot. Really root down the front big toe to keep that grounding. Take a few good deep breaths. One more breath cycle. Come up to a long spine. Shift into the front leg. Bend the front knee and extend your left leg long. A little balance, balance practice. So walk your hands closer to your foot and even bring your hands right next to your foot. So it's like one narrow base. When I go to balance, I keep my focus here on the ground in front of me and really activate your left leg in the air. You can play with the balance of one hand or both hands off the floor. Legs strong. If you feel a little zesty today, you can take your hands to the floor and practice a little kick up. 
They could be like me today. Kind of find a little kick up, don't really balance, but it's fun. Good practice for the legs. Take one more kick or one more breath. And we'll all meet feet together on the ground. Keep the feet together, bend the knees out wide, and come into a squat position. So the hips kind of pull back and the arms and the upper body come forwards. Let the head drop. I like to move around a little bit the knees and the hips to get into the lower back here. Two slow deep breaths. And look at this, you're almost in crow pose. So if you're into crow, let's do it. Tuck the knees into the arms. If you're not into crow, take a forward fold. So you and crow stay as long as you'd like, and then push back to chaturanga. If you're not in crow, and you come into a halfway left here. And we'll move through. Have a little push up, your tempo. Dog or cobra. And all together, downward facing. Ha. Take a good deep breath here. Open your mouth, let it go. Ha. Side two, left leg goes to the sky. Let's pull that knee to your left elbow. Inhale, send it up high. Over to the right elbow. Back up one more time. Take a big step between the hands. Warrior two, here we go up. Let's sink in. Spin your front palm, reverse your warrior. Let the hips sink down to touch. Keep the front knee bent, reach forward. Catch onto your block for half moon if you wish, or no block. Keep up the right leg. And stay with straight lines. Or bend the knee, catch your foot, kick into it. For three. I know you fall out of this one very easily, too. One. Beautiful. Release your foot if you've got it. Extend your leg long and walk your hands down. Step back to a low lunge. I'm going to lower down the back knee for starters so you can get the hands more on the inside of your foot. And we're going to take it down to the elbows or to a block if you choose. Move around in this posture. It helps you kind of find those areas that might be a little bit tighter. You could stay like this or go for a bit more of the quadricep stretch. Bend the knee, catch your foot. I usually turn my front foot out of the touch to give my knee and hip some good space. And so if you have your foot sort of square the hips off more towards the floor, then lean into this. Two deep breaths. Holding your foot, let it go. Let's come back to frame your front foot, moving towards pyramid pose. Bring that left foot a bit closer, a little bit wider. Reset your body with a breath. Hold it. Head drop. Let's give this two or three more slow, deep breaths. Beautiful. Let's take a halfway lift now. Breathe and look forward. Soften the front knee so you can shift right into a standing leg extension. Gaze is a touch forward. And walk your hands more in line with your foot. I notice sometimes I'll do this and I'll really like to kind of rest in this hip joint. I want to ask you to engage more leg energy to draw up, increase more uplifting from the ground. 
and that will help with your balance and also help with strengthening the joints. So you can hold on with one hand, you can hold on with two hands, you can kick up into handstand if you want. Just kind of play around here, sometimes it's touch and go like that. Have some fun with it. Three, two, one. We'll bring both feet down to the floor, this time about two fists width apart. Soften your knees, let your head go. And we'll go for very relax. The palms slide underneath your feet, toes right into the, to the wrist joints if possible. It might be fingertips. Let this take a halfway lift, long spine. Hold, empty, drop in. Soften your jaw. Circulate like five slow breaths. your hands. Come up into a long spine. You'll toe your feet together. Bow with your breath up. Rise up standing. Awesome. Sweep up high. And let's hand right by your side. Samasta Dikhi. Close your eyes here in your standing posture. And just take a moment to check in. Notice how you feel. Fully balanced, right and left side, top to bottom, inside, outside. Let's work with some balance here now. So let's shift into your left leg. Catch your right knee with your right hand. You could stay with this or you could catch your big toe and extend your leg out in front of you. I'll let you choose. But again, like that previous posture, Consider drawing energy from the earth up through your leg to help uplift your whole body. Take a good deep breath. Open the leg out to the right. You can look over your left shoulder if you prefer. I wish you could see my view. There's mountains all around outside of every window. I could share that with you. Let's come the leg right back to the center. Keep the leg lifted, both hands to your hips. Straighten your right leg out and point your toes. This is a lot in the quads and the core, so kind of draw the belly in. Pick your leg up. Let's do little pulses. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Feet on the ground. Good job. Merlin, what do you think? Good? Other side. So left hand, left knee, or catch with these fingers to your big toe. Lift your heart. Breathe. Just the simple act of shifting your gaze point can make a big difference in these balanced postures. Gradually open the leg up to the side. Roll open your shoulder. Outer hip is really active. It'll keep you from falling over more. And look over the right shoulder. Catch your view. Breathe. And bring it right back to center. Keep your leg lifted, please. Bring both hands to your hips and point your toes and do a little pulses. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Feet on the ground. Samastiti. Beautiful. Sweep your arms to the sky. Let's take eagle. Right arm under. Since we're in Colorado, there are lots of eagles, just out west in general. Right leg lifts up and over. If you can wrap your foot, maybe you're like me, just tap the pinky toe on your shin, but keep the hips low. Elbows rise, shoulders draw down, and breathe. Give us two more breaths. Beautiful, feet land, inhale, arms to the sky. Other side, left under, left up and over. Sometimes it takes a couple times to get that leg where you like it. And hug everything into the midline. Breathe. Two more deep breaths. Ooh. 
Sweep up as you breathe in. Bottles to tiki, hands by your side. Awesome, one more balance posture. Tree pose. Just take that right foot up as high as you can on your leg. Open the knee out. Hands can be at your heart, Anjali Mudra. They can stay here. Any version if you prefer. It's up to you. Again, draw the left hip in. Draw the energy up from the earth. Extend nice and tall. Soft gaze, soft jaw. Give it one more good breath. Switch sides. Right foot lands. You might go right to the second side. Pick up the left foot. Take a moment to find that center place before you move into any other versions of this pose. You can choose a different arm variation. Two more deep breaths. Feet on the ground, Samastiti. So we'll be at the top of our mats. Hope you're feeling great. Just got one more standing pose sequence, and then we'll go down to the ground. So breathe as you reach up. Take a bow and exhale. Sometimes it feels good to linger here after doing something like balance posture. So take your time. You can take a vinyasa or stay in a forward fold. It's all your choice. Just use your breath to guide you through the pacing the postures. Step your right foot forward, one or two. I'm putting a block here above my right side because we're moving to triangle pose. So straighten your legs and reach your right arm up and go back a touch. So go for some length in the right side. It's as if you're hinging from this hip here and your left hip is always moving back. You might put a block under your head at any height. Some days this feels fabulous. Just get a little more length in your torso. And breathe. Pull the fingers together and up towards the ceiling. Good, full breath in, good, full breath out, one more, and then as you breathe in, come back into a warrior two pose, and bring your hands to your hips, it's a little clunky because I don't want to face you in back, but we're going to go to twisting triangles, so square your hips off towards your front, left arm goes to the sky, breathe, and again, hinge from your hips, keep the length in your torso, and draw your hips back. You can cross the hand and land on the ground, on the floor, or on that's a block, on a floor. So press down into these points, two feet in the hand, and rotate. Tailbone drops back. You can keep the hand here if that's best for your shoulder. Or you can take it up towards the ceiling. I'm somewhere in between those two today, but I'll go with this. So breathe. And sometimes we say, look up to your top hand, and it's like, oh, I'm not really wanting to do that. Don't worry about it. Look at the floor and rotate the torso. That's the goal. Take one more big breath. We'll meet in down, face down. You could stay in a downward dog. You could go to child's pose. You could take a vinyasa. I'm going to let you choose what feels the most supportive for you right now. Coming back into down dog. Take one big breath. Left foot steps forward. Warrior two. Let's turn the front palm straight in your front knee. Reverse. Inhale. Come forward slowly. Triangle pose. Again, block or no block. Front foot, really press into the big toe mound. Create a nice little arch in your foot, which is also going to wake up the whole inner leg line. And send the right fingers to the sky. And breathe. 
Activate that left hip, draw it underneath your body a little bit more. And breathe a little more big here, reach. Let's take one more breath. Good. Now as you inhale, this time, come on up right. Turn all your toes towards one direction. Hands on your hips. Let's get nice and tall and breathe. Exhale, fold forward and down. Release the hands to the floor and walk them back a bit so your elbows are more bent if possible. And then you can use the floor, press down and forward into your hands to help you draw in a little deeper. Lean your hips a little forward. Take three deep breaths. Exhale, tone the belly, tone your legs, and bring your hands on your hips. So it's all legs, all core. Breathe. Gradually make your way up to stand. Twisting triangle. So square off towards the top of your mat once again. Adjust the width and the length of the feet. Right arm, reach it up high. Breathe. Come forward and down. Any little adjustments to help us feel more stable and solid. Breathe in, lengthen. Exhale, pull back. So on this side, I'm going to choose to keep my hand on my low back because it serves my left shoulder the best. And I really feel this in my whole left side, my T band, hip, inner, all of it. Just breathe. Two more deep breaths. Meet in a downward dog. Remember your choices. You could take child's pose, you could stay here, you could flow through a vinyasa. Once you get back to down dog, take a good exhalation. Look towards your hands. Maybe you're a floater through to seated. Maybe you just kind of step, cross your ankles, and come to seated. Like straight. Dandasana, staff pose. So shoulders roll back, heels of the hands ground, sit up as tall as you can in your torso, and hug everything in. Take three good breaths here. Awesome, inhale, sweep your arms to the ceiling. Hinge from your hips, come forward as long as you can. You can touch onto your feet, or if you have a strap or towel, use them. Or even bring your hands down like this. Just breathe in, lengthen the front of your body. As you exhale, hinge into your a little bit more. Breathe back. Nice bird dog. Down dog. Inhale, come on upright, set your hands behind you about 12 inches. And notice how when I do that, I kind of tuck the tailbone and slide back. Feet and legs hug in. I'm going to press down into my hands and heels and press the feet forward. I feel like I'm stepping on like a gas pedal. And hug the legs in strong. Lift your hips. Use your glute to action to lift your hips. You can let your head fall back if that feels good. Take one more breath. Awesome. Hips come to the floor. That was a bit much on your wrist. You can circle them around. Johnny Shirshasana. Bend the right knee. Bring it in like a seated tree posture. Square off and breathe. Reach up. Come forward over your front leg. And down. Within your breath, the length of the heart forward to your foot. And bow. And again, I don't have a strap or a towel to demo, but if you have a hand towel, you can use it like a strap or a strap. It'll make your leg a little bit shorter. Take one more good breath cycle. And switch sides. So sit up. Left 
any bends, any hard reach to the ceiling. Let's come on forward and down. You know, there's some days where you can't really straighten that leg. It gets really tight in the hamstrings or even the hip or low back. So keeping your knees slightly bent. And some days I even put a block under my knee like that. Still gets the hamstrings to stretch, but that whole posterior line of your body, the posterior chain, all of that can stretch. So, you know, accommodate as you need to in your body to make this feel good and productive. A couple more breaths. a bit forward towards the top of your mat and roll down slow so use your core tuck in your chin and sort of uh, lay down one vertebrae at a time on the ground ha huh. that's how you land we'll call this a active rest stack the knees over the ankles you might even do a bit of a pelvic tilt in and out of that a couple times it might feel great on the low back How about some back bends? So I don't know how ambitious you are today. You could add into this back bend sequence. It's going to be pretty basic. Or you can stay right here and put a block under your hip at any height and bring a more of a supported back bend with the shoulders under. It's all good. On my trip, my goal has been to do at least three wheels a day because that means I have to warm my body up to get into a wheel um, and I don't lose that flexibility in my spine. So it's really valuable to keep the range of motion in our spine in this direction because it keeps us feeling more youthful and energized. So let's start with bridge. So fingertips can touch your heels. Ground your heels, lift your hips, tuck under your shoulders. I usually go like this with my upper arms, press the elbows down, fingers to the sky to help access a little more upper back bends. Some of you might interlace your hands and extend your arms. Hug in the legs. Take a good breath. And you could stay here or join me. Set your hands. My disclaimer, it's not the most beautiful wheel, so let's go with it. Press down, go with the feeling. Lift up. I lift my heels like this because it helps my lower back open up a little more easily. Take two full breaths. Lower down, come down slow. Once your shoulders land, lift your heels, tuck down the tailbone and roll through your spine. And just pause. Doing nothing is very valuable to notice how that lands in your body. When you feel ready, we'll do that again. But start and stay in bridge. We'll go right to wheel. A little bit of both like this. Continue to focus on your breathing. Breathe and enter. One, three, two, one. Slowly make your way down. Awesome. After wheel, it might feel really good to take the legs and arms up. And kind of just neutralize your low back and move around your wrist joints. Ha! Huh. One more. Let's do it. Set your feet. I can feel your energy, guys. Come on, let's sit down. Draw the shoulders under. Stay in bridge or set your hands by your ears. Press up. Three. Take your time. And let's go around. Let's come to Supta Baddha Konasana. Set your feet together, knees wide. Do a bit of a tailbone lengthening. And place a hand at your heart, hand at your belly. Notice the rate of your heartbeat. See if you can't slow it down with your deep breaths.
remember your original intention. Bring that back. I feel that there's a lot to say about, of course, a breath practice and a movement practice. And infusing that with intentionality. It sets in into our body more completely, I feel. Bring your knees together gradually. A little bit of a hug in towards your belly. Feels great to kind of roll around independently with the legs or just kind of give that lower back a little massage. Gradually landing in a happy baby. Good timing. Shoulders and head relax. Just let that whole back body soften. knees in and rock up to a seated posture. And for this moment, I want to uh, invite you to do something with your feet in the air. There's a lot of ways to practice inverted postures. There's headstand, shoulder stand, waterfall with a block underneath you. There's many others as well. So this is your time to practice. This is a supported waterfall. It's the most restorative. I'll show that one because I think it feels pretty good right now. And once you get your posture, come back to your breath. Stay tuned in. Please don't tune out. If you want to pause this video and do a couple different variations of inverted postures or spend more time, I invite you to do that as well. This waterfall posture, a nice secondary movement from here is to extend the legs long and a little bit wider, supported pentacle pose. Arms can come over your head, belly down. And just give your belly a good breath. You're in a headstand or any other posture for your counter pose. Could be child's pose. Could be coming right onto your backs. Giving the knees a hug into your chest. See what feels good here. And eventually, if you're in child's pose, make your way to your back. A simple twist. Drop your knees over to the, the left and extend your right arm out to the side. You can look towards the right hand. It might open up a little bit more here. Stay tuned into breath and draw the knees a little bit to your shoulder. And you're ready here, switch sides. Time for Shavasana, really. Bring your legs right back to center and give your knees one more final hug into your chest. <laughs> if you're home practicing and you have pets, I bet they've been doing this too the whole time. And we'll set up for Shavasana. So go ahead and stretch your legs out long. If you have any props, blankets, bolster, or anything, just feel free to use what helps you feel comfortable. Once you get into a comfortable posture, surrender any of the doing of your practice and just allow the breath to become natural. Using this final posture as a way to tune in. Let's come up in this practice. Once you 
let go of. Stay in Shavasana for as long as you like. If you come out of it, come out of it gradually with your fingers and toes, your head. Mm. Give the knees a hug. Roll over to your favorite side today. Eventually, come back up to a comfortable seated posture. Just a full circle, just like the beginning. Let your sit bones round. Place your hands in a position where they feel connected, but grounding for you right now. Stay tall. Either close your eyes or gaze at the floor in front of you for a moment here. All that movement that we just practiced is a really great segue to a meditation. So you could practice that right now and just sit in silence, focusing on your breath. Bring our palms together, palms at the center of our chest. Raise them up to your forehead center and together breathe out. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day.